So children are being medicated. We're, we're having a continued drug, drug crisis. So focusing techniques are going to be so important now for those of us that are older, young people, and for continuing generations. So let me go through some little fun techniques. And then I want to go through some French parenting ideas, because this is how you reparent your inner child too, in ways that very much help you learn containment. I lost where I have the numbers, but I believe the difference is 3.5%. It would be the number of ADD diagnoses in the population in France. In America right now, the estimate is 10 to 15% and growing. We are, the suggested um, numbers or statistics on highly sensitive people that we're 15 to 20%. That's, that's a lot of the population. That's a lot to be disordered, okay? All right, let's see. Okay, fun techniques. Okay, they're gonna sound ridiculously simple. That's not the hard part. The hard part is allowing yourself to do the ridiculously simple thing that just can be easily helpful. Most techniques, they don't have to help you go from 10 to zero. The best change, just like weight loss, isn't I went to the gym for a month, I did a cleanse diet and lost 50 pounds. That's where people yo-yo, right? It's not sustainable, it's not a healthy change. It's a drastic change and that pendulum swings. So these techniques, aren't to wow, blow your mind and fix all of this non-attention, okay? Let me turn this on, there we go. It is actually okay, to help you go from maybe a 10 of distraction to a seven, and then over time to a five. And then let's get it down to a three and we can practice into that, okay? So first off, as always, you'll feel free to roll your eyes at me. If you heard me say it too many times, it's meditation. That's the mind muscle, okay? That is really, really the mind muscle. It's not about getting that mind to silence, to be still. It's about the exercise of, I am doing nothing else except being right here, contained inside of this skin. You'll notice whether this was your first live stream and your first time hanging out with me or whether you've been with me a lot. That's why I start with centering. Centering. If we are to be focused, how do you focus a camera? You, you hone in, right? How do we focus this being? We meditate. And please don't make the act of meditation this ne next big task thing you have to take on and get ready to do like people do with like, I'll start a diet on Monday. When you get a little cue from the universe, like earlier today, I felt that headache coming on. I had been crying a bit earlier. I'm having some, some changes with some of my staff and it's hard to make changes. And I was, I was weepy about it. It's hard stuff. I stopped for a moment. I felt that tension headache building. I just said, Nikki, stop and breathe right there. That awareness of, ooh, I am, an, I am uncomfortable. Something icky is building. If you allow it, that is an invitation from the universe. To, it, it's going, psst, icky, psst, psst, hey, this would be a really good time to just stop and give your body and your mind all these little muscles, the signal oh, to let go. 15 seconds, 20 seconds, a minute, three if you got it in you. Doing that multiple times a day is a focus muscle, okay? Brain FM. I believe if somebody knows, please put it in the comments. If not, I will have we'll put it in after this posts when the video is done. Brain FM. Okay, it's an app I found years ago. I had the CEO on the show. I loved it so much. If I can get their company, we're working with the ad agency because we really genuinely use them every day. I do. My husband does. Ah, thank you, Chris. That's a coupon code for you. I think you get a month free or something. But they have a focus. And that Brain FM is using music, okay? Music created by humans. So it has that spiritual, oh, this was made naturally feeling that maybe you feel and connect with as an empath. 
maybe you don't, but on a subconscious level, I have to believe that means something to our humanity. Music, so just sacred and magical. And then AI, artificial intelligence, science and technology that works with our brain waves to induce a state in about 15 minutes, whether that state is sleep or focus. I've been using it to write, to write my memoir. I still have a ways to go, but I pop that in. It gets me in that zone. What a beautiful, absolutely no side effects way to hone in. I keep suggesting and asking like to my clients who have little ones, it's like, hey, how about some headphones on that little one? Let's, let's see what this might do. Those of us who are hypervigilant and have, are working on healing nervous systems, imagine if our little brains had been inundated with that instead of so much tension. With brain waves that work to bring a calm state or a relaxed state. There's a chill state. There's a meditative state. I know how much of a pain in the ass it is to pay for all the apps, but this is a good one. Okay. All right. Another technique, the timer technique. This is huge. And if you watch me use my timer technique, you will be like, what is this broad doing? Has she lost her mind? Genuinely. Because sometimes I'm putting five minutes on the clock over and over and over again. And the deal is let's play the five minute game. Let's play the five minute game. And here is part of the struggle with the ADD, ADD diagnoses. And I should have mentioned this earlier. They're not factoring in childhood trauma. Those criteria say, all right, it, it's not ADD if you can factor out like oppositional defiant behavior, if you can factor out um, their cognitive understanding, like they've got to be able to understand the direction if they are to operate from that direction and fulfill with that direction, whether it's pick up this toy, fold your clothes, put your clothes away, whatever it is. Other things that we can do, the, the five minute game. So you put five minutes on your watch, going back to that, on a timer. And what that does is, so if I have to clean the kitchen, even if I have cooked, because sometimes I cook like a mad woman, y'all, I love it. It's like meditation for me. I made about three quiches last weekend, <laughs> different kinds of quiche, trying out different ratios of eggs and cream and all that. Okay. I call it test kitchen time. And I make a colossal mess. Okay? If I don't put that timer on, I'm going to do some of the dishes and then I'm going to go to the bathroom and then I'm going to realize, okay, let me sort the laundry to start a load of laundry. And then I'm going to go, oh yeah, now I'm thirsty. Then I'm going to go get a drink. Then I'm going to go, oh yeah, I need to wipe the counter. And I wipe the counter. Then I'm like, oh yeah, I stopped the laundry. <laughs> and I go like this. Okay. When I put that five minute timer on or 10 minute timer, what it does is it keeps me on task. Each time that timer goes off, I'm like, oh yeah, let me see how much I can get done in the next five minutes. And I stand there washing dishes. Timer goes off. Let me hit restart again. So that, that, that timer is like, Oh yeah, stay with this activity. Oh yeah, stay with this activity. It also works like this. Most of us, especially if you have a strong inner adolescent that you are doing inner child work or know that you need to, okay? Most of us have that part or maybe some of your trauma was like mine, like just housework or cleaning up just ugh, put puts you back in that ick place because it was part of controlling you or making you feel bad or never being good enough. So that gives me the opportunity to say to my inner child, I know you don't wanna do all this work. I know you worked all day and now there's more housework to do. There's always more housework, it's never done. And I let her have her moment. I go, you know what? You really only have to do five minutes. Oh, really? Yep, just five minutes. Because the truth is we have that inner adolescent that creates a procrastination, okay? in large part because many of you in here have a perfectionist. The subconscious drive of this kind of procrastination is, well, I expect myself to do it perfectly and that's a lot of pressure. So why would I start anything if I have to do it perfectly and I can't, and so therefore I'm gonna fail. So why would I start, why would I try? Resistance. And people go, why am I resisting? Why am I procrastinating? 
So it cuts through all of that if I offer myself the message. You don't have to do it perfectly. Let's just do five minutes. And after we get over that resistance, we feel good because we're starting to get stuff done. We're in the doing instead of that preparatory, anticipatory anxiety. Okay. And once I do that, once you get started, then you're like, yeah. And then you want to do another five minutes and you want to do another five minutes and you want to do another five minutes. That's a great game to play as a family. 10 minutes on the clock. Let's see who can do the most. And then look around as a family. And sometimes it's enough to go. We all did great. That's enough. And sometimes it's like, what do you think, guys? I think if we did five more minutes, oh, my goodness, how clean would the house be? Wouldn't that feel good tomorrow morning? And that's how you start to instill doing things, an energy of motivation towards the things that we don't want to do. We have so much on our plates as people that we don't want to do. Be honest with yourself. What do you want to do? I want to write and do art and help all the people I can. I don't want to pair socks. I don't want to stop and think about a grocery list. I want to do the things that feel good. Of course we do. Thank you.